Hey, what's up, addicts? Thanks so much for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. We're back again with Eric Swanson. We're on the bank and we're talking steelhead once again. Yes, we are. And this time we're gonna break it down even a little bit more simpler. We know sometimes it's, it's intimidating with these big, bulky setups, five different lures going out there, three different lures. It, sometimes it can get intimidating. So one thing that I found extremely effective out here is a very, very simple setup and it's just fishing a plug Absolutely. by itself. So I thought, let's talk about that. Brought Eric Swanson from Eric Swanson Outdoors in. Absolutely. Let's talk about it, dude. So some days, guys, these steelhead, they want plugs. Some days they don't want a coon shrimp in the spinning glove. So it's good to be versed and have, you know, a backup in your pocket in case what you're normally doing isn't working. And my backup happens to be plunking a plug. So what I want to first talk about here, guys, is the proper setup of your pole holder. So I like my pole holder to be at about a 45 degree angle. And when I put the pole holder in the sand, I want to make sure and bury it at least eight or 10 inches. Because a lot of these times when you're plug fishing, these steel will absolutely just throttle your rod. And the last thing you want to have happen is your rod fall out of the rod holder, go skipping across, lose a fish and your favorite plug. So make sure you bury that pole holder about eight to 10 inches in, and I like it about a 45 degree angle. So going up from that, guys, you have to have the right rod, reel, and line combination to cast a setup like this out there. So I like to use about a 10 and a half foot rod. Nine, nine and a half works well as two. <clears throat> so next thing, guys, is the reel. I like these Okuma Low Pro line counters with 50 pound braid. And the nice thing about these guys is they have a line counter on them. So when you cast this setup out there and you catch a fish, you can make a mental note of that and cast back in that same spot. Cause where there's one fish, there's probably four or five. Exactly. Yep. So going down and from that And what you're gonna guys, find too guys in a lot of these videos is we use a lot of the same rods on the bank because we love them. These, these are awesome rods for bank fishing, but you can get away with whatever you have at home. If you have an eight and a half foot rod or you got a Shakespeare, whatever you got, just get out there and get fishing because it's gonna be better that you're at least out on the water putting a, putting bait in the water or a plug in the water than not fishing at all. So yeah, Definitely don't let your setup stop you from coming out in the water. Um, we just really love these 10-6 Okumas. They work really well for all sorts of applications, so that's why we run them. But like Marlon said, if you have an eight foot rod, come out and use it. Don't let that be a reason to stop you. So guys, let's go up here to the business end of this. So I have my braided main line with my swivel to a bumper bead to a Brad's bead chain. And on my dropper here, guys, I'm running 30 inches of 15 pound mono. I'm running 15 pound because if I snag my weight, that 15 pound will break before my 25 pound main line or leader will. So going down from my bead chain here, guys, I have 40 inches of 25 pound mono to my maglip. What I like to do on these mag lips, guys, is I like to run a dual double lock snaps. So two of them on there allows that plug to work even more freely than it would with one. And then guys, I have my swivel with my open eye side wash that you crimp onto it. And that allows for that steelhead to grab onto your hook and jump and spin and you know acrobatic as all heck like all these steelhead are. And it allows those fish to jump and spin without getting enough leverage on that uh, single um, um, split ring that it comes stock with. So I like to run that barrel swivel, that single hook, so those fish can't get enough torque to get off. So 40 inches leader, 30 inch drop. Next thing I wanna cover guys, is adding scent to your plugs. Don't put this thing out there bare. These fish, they smell parts per billion. So that means these fish smell extremely well. So always add scent, my favorite to put on these, is a Pro Cure Super Gel, the uh, Anise Krill. The Super Gel is really sticky and sticks on the plug extremely well. Um, the key to this, guys, is not adding too much. So I like to add about that much. Then I like to keep it on the top half of the plug. That way, when that fish comes up and grabs it, it's not too slimy and too sticky back here. Because I've had it happen before where I've gooed these things up and you'll have a bunch of takedowns or it just throttles your rod and doesn't stick. And my theory behind it is, you have all this super greasy stuff on there, they come up and grab it and they just slide right off. So a little bit works wonders here. So once we have it uh, all gelled up, the next thing guys is to cast it out. And once again guys, the reason we're showing you this, I know we've showed you a few of these tips and videos before, but we wanted to just break it down a little bit more basic and show you that it doesn't have to be as complicated. You know, I, I feel like we see a lot of comments where guys are like, well, that just seems like a lot of stuff. And you really honestly, there was guys way before we came around and started doing this triple stuff that were not fishing as complicated and they were still catching fish. So 
we wanted to just break it down a little bit more basic so that's the point of just kind of showing you just the more basic plug setup and once again like eric talked about there are there has been days where sometimes plugs just straight up outfish bait out here it does yeah, absolutely. so let's cast this fish out absolutely. there real quick guys before i cast it out there you want to definitely make sure and use a pyramid weight because you cast it out there that plug is going to be pulling downstream if you use a cannonball style that plug will eventually work that cannonball all the way down almost to the bank again so you use a pyramid um i like to run sixes and eights seems to work well but pyramid is very important so it doesn't drag your stuff downstream you guys are casting when you out. cast it out there you want to make sure that you fling it really hard so your stuff gets tangled up right oh every time yes yeah. <laughs> just kidding yep big thing guys zero that line counter so when you cast it out there if you do catch a fish you can get right back to wherever ledge or whatever number you were at that caught the fish so when you guys cast, it's important to do a long lobbing cast versus a really short snappy cast because you don't want your plug getting all spun up in your weight because then obviously you're not fit. So be really careful do a long, nice lobbing cast. And what you want to look for as that thing hits the thing is you want to look for it. You want to be able to feel it. And you can see it. You can feel it and see it, right, Eric? Yeah, yeah. yeah so as it's falling, you want to make sure that you can feel it. And that's how you're going to know that it's not tangled when you cast that thing out there. And the nice thing, guys, about doing that like shorter lobbing cast is you can see everything kind of hit the water if you do a really sharp short cast you know everything's hitting the water real fast you can't see so that longer cast you can see everything lay out and you know if something got tangled up so now that i've been the rod holder like a nice bend to my rod so i kind of tighten up the line a little bit and the next step guys is adding your belt you know on the bank here you might be in the woods using the bathroom up barbecuing with your buddies maybe drinking a beer and if you don't have a bell on your pool, you might have a takedown and not know it. So having a bell definitely just ensures that you see every bite that you get. And just like Eric said right there, this that's why this fishery is like one of my favorite of the year. Because you get out on the beach with your buddies, you get all barbecue, hang out. A lot of times it's hot and sunny like yeah. this, so you're swimming in the water. It's just a great time to get out here with your family and friends. And great time. Even when there's not a lot of fish coming through, I mean, I can't count how many times I've been out here and haven't caught a fish and I didn't even realize it because yeah. we just had fun hanging out on the beach the whole time, so. Exactly, exactly, it's a great time, great time. Great time, so I highly recommend trying to get out here, get fishing, go after some summer steelhead, or they can get out in your boat and fish with you. You're doing some summer steelhead trips Absolutely. right now too, Yeah, right? so I'm doing summer steelhead, doing some walleye, and then really looking forward to that huge coho they're predicting to return to the river here in August and September. So if you guys wanna get out on the water and you know book a trip with me, visit my website, it's ericswansonoutdoors.com, fill out the little book a trip tab, email us directly to my phone, I'll get in touch with you, get set something up. So. Thanks so much for tuning in, addicts. Don't forget, please tap that subscribe button over here in the left-hand corner. Keep helping us get more and more subscribers, and we'll see you on the river. See you guys around.